Pencil Kings, 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 Pencil Kings. All right, so we missed an episode last week. I apologize for that. Things are crazy around here. Um, we are doing this new initiative inside the community to create a whole new level of engagement for all the members of Pencil Kings. And it's really cool, and we're launching it right away. It's right around the corner, but that's been taking up all of our time, and I wasn't able to get an episode recorded and get it to the editor in time, so I apologize for that. Now, in the last episode, I talked about shaking off the rust getting back into art. Um, there's, you know, there's so many people who they were in art at one point or they really liked to draw. And then it's like life happened at around the age of 25. Things got serious. People started having kids. The career took over. You got a dog. All those things happened. And art was one of the things that just got left by the wayside, which is fine. You know, it's, it's okay to leave things and, and let other more important things take over. But now that there's time again in your life and you're looking how to fill up that time, art is a fantastic way to do it. There's so many benefits to it. I got into meditation a little bit last year. And I really feel like art is, feel, or at least for me, art feels a lot like meditation. I'm sure there's a lot of differences to them, but I, I would really love to see brain scans of an artist who's drawing and kind of in that moment or in flow or whatever, and somebody who's meditating. I feel like there would be some sim interesting similarities there. So, shaking off the rust. I got this book recently, and actually I got an app, and I'm just going to throw this app out there because this app is amazing. It costs nine ninety five a month, and what you get is this uh, unlimited library of books. I think they've got something like two to three million books in their library. You also get one free audiobook each month and you get credits for them. So each month you get another credit and then you can download another audiobook. Um, it's called Scribd, S-C-R-I-B-D. And what's really cool is that for someone who travels or somebody maybe that can't get to a library or doesn't have a great library, there's so many books there that, and for all interests. They've also got comic books, which I think is really cool and kind of unique. Um, and all this is just available to download, and you can download it, and then you can read it offline, which I think is amazing. So anyway, there are a lot of really cool books on there, and I've seen this book before, and I, I'll have to double-check on the title. I'll just pull it up here while we're uh, talking. And I believe it is called You Can Draw in 30 Days, and it's this real – or maybe it's the Beginner's Guide to Drawing in 30 Days. Let me pull it up here. But I've been going through and doing these exercises, and they start off very, very simply. So if you've been drawing before, this may be too simple, but if you've drawn before but never studied, this might be a book that you want to pick up. So I'm just loading it up, and it's on my phone, and I can put it on my computer. It's uh, it's fantastic. I've got so many books on here. Um, well, it's going to take me a second, so I'm going to have to look this up for the end of the episode. But anyway, the idea is that in 30 days, you can go through a bunch of these different exercises and work through it by yourself. So I've been doing this using what I the software that I talked about in the last episode called Clip Studio Paint. And one of the really cool things that I found recently that when I first saw it really blew my mind was this whole idea of using your finger to smudge your digital drawings, which I think is just, I remember, you know, you, you start drawing and if you haven't tried this for yourself, you have to try it. Um, you know, some people will be rolling their eyes, but draw something with a pencil, shade it a little bit and then smudge it with your finger. Like just start brushing over it with your finger and watch how your finger can push the graphite around on the page. It is very cool and you can get some very nice shading effects. So I remember when I first did this, I was blown away. I can't remember if I accidentally discovered it or somebody showed it to me or what, but I remember it being a breakthrough, like, you know, when I was 10 years old or 13 years old or something. And I feel like there's there's always these little tricks with it, whatever you're trying to learn where you don't know, no one's shown you the, the tools yet. And so you're just discovering it on your own and there's extreme aha moments. So that was one of them. 
And then I don't know why, but I never made the connection with digital art that you could also use your finger as a smudge tool. And it's really cool. In Photoshop, in Procreate, if you're using uh, the, the popular painting app on the iPad, um, I'm not sure what's popular for Android, but I'm sure there's a painting app. And you can take that smudge tool and you can use like a, a brush that's kind of textured and get these really cool finger smudges happening. And if you play a little bit with a setting, you, you can get something that very closely mimics real paper, except that, you know, your fingers are clean at the end of it. And there's not, you're not spreading all this dirty graphite all over the place and having black hands. So in this book, I've been going through it just to see what, what's out there, what other resources are there that I can bring in, into the community to tell people about that they, they might have access to. And I think this is a great one. And like I said, for those of you who are looking for something that's easy to follow and uh, it's, it's pretty fun. And I, I really do believe in this method where it's teaching you to see and it's teaching you the principles along with it. And bit by bit, you're stacking, you know, lessons on top of lessons and it's very gradual and is very cool. So that is that as far as uh, shaking off the rust goes. But I think there's a lot of different ways that you can approach this. And one of the most powerful ways that I found, and I think I've talked about this a little bit, but we'll talk about it more right here, is the idea of having fun with your art. So it always used to be, you know, if you're on the professional career track or you want to be a professional artist or a commercial artist or working in entertainment or something like that. There's like this seriousness that comes along with it. And not everybody has it, but a lot of people do. Uh, and I've seen this a lot. And it's like, as soon as you decide that you want to make it a career, it stops being fun. If you think back when you were a kid, it was probably a lot of fun to draw and to be creative and to explore and experiment that was a, a really a magical time. And then somewhere along the line, you decided, yeah, I'm going to be a pro at this. I'm going to turn this, this hobby or this thing that I really like into a career. And, and we know now that there are tons of art careers out there. Uh, there's lots of things that we can do. And when you're really amazing, it's hard to, you know, it's this type of creative work is very difficult to to outsource, you know, at the highest levels and to to automate because all, well, maybe one day we'll get to the, the, the point of the, the creative robot, but we're not there yet. So there's still a lot of uh, demand and need for creative people that can express themselves visually. So you go down this professional track or you start to, you decide that you're going to be a pro and then all of a sudden everything gets really serious and you start getting really hard on yourself and you lose that element of what was fun before. And what I found in getting back into things is that I, instead of thinking, okay, I'm going to get back into art. I'm going to you know, create a comprehensive study plan for myself. I'm going to get very organized. And I'm going to know what the steps are. And I'm going to set a, you know, a week by week plan for myself so that I can keep myself on track, get an accountability buddy, blah, 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 all this stuff. Instead of doing that, I just started to think back, like, what was fun? And what did I enjoy drawing? And look at that. And so what I arrived at was very simple drawing. I allowed myself to draw simply. I allowed myself to be happy with simple drawings. And this came, it took a while for this to come about just to get to that point where I gave myself permission. And for you, if you've been struggling as well, it might be difficult for you to give yourself permission as well to have fun with this and to draw something that you're personally, you are personally interested in and that excites you. Because there's a lot of things that tell, you know, when you're looking at these examples of what other people are doing, it feels like you should be doing that too, but that's not necessarily the way. And there's a lot of opportunity to be creative in a lot of different ways. I always recommend people to go and take a look at the children's book section and look at some of the illustrations and the creativity that's displayed in those books. And I feel like this is a real, an amazing place to reground yourself and to Go back to that place of what's really fun with art and how complex or how simple can things be. I think it'll also challenge a lot of your assumptions on what art really is. And I mean, that's something that could be up for debate for a long time. But it gets you back to that area of like thinking of, you know, what's fun and then allowing yourself to explore within that. So what I mean is that if you love I, Ninja Turtles was my thing. I think I've talked about this before. How much I love Ninja Turtles, but let's say you love Ninja Turtles now. 
why not draw Ninja Turtles? You know, what's forcing you to feel like you have to do nude figure studies all the time if you just love Ninja Turtles or if you love My Little Ponies? I heard about this whole culture of adults that love My Little Ponies called Bronies it continues to blow my mind. But if that's your thing and you and you love drawing My Little Pony, go for it. You, you shouldn't let things stop you. And it's not to say that that will get you a career, but in terms of shaking off the rust and getting back into art and enjoying things and having fun. This is, these are clues, you know, the things that you enjoy, the things that you like, start doing that. Start looking at the tools that you like to use or allow yourself, again, to be bad. Allow yourself to try some different tools and see what those do for you. You know, you've never worked digital, but you've got an iPad. What's stopping you from grabbing an app and trying to paint with your finger on using that app and just seeing how it works, seeing how it feels, pushing color around. Or if you don't want to do color, see how it feels only working with black and white and pushing that around and try different brushes. There's just so many things that you can experiment with. And I think the big thing is allowing yourself to say, man, this isn't going to be that amazing. I'm just going to have fun with this. I'm just going to, I'm only going to give it 15 minutes and see how it goes or 10 minutes or, or even just five minutes. I'm going to give, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do some drawing. I'm only going to give it five minutes. I'm just going to sketch. I don't have a sketchbook anymore. All I have is this lined paper, this really cheap notebook paper and a pen that I got from a hotel. Who cares? You know, use that. Just do something. See how it feels. Do it for five minutes while you're watching a TV program, if that's your thing. Do it for five minutes while you're waiting for a YouTube clip to load and then see what happens. And what happened with me was that time all of a sudden started to disappear. It started to fade away and five minutes would turn into two hours sometimes. I love learning new software. So for me, this is something that's very exciting. So the fact that I had new software, it was something that was really fun and it allowed me to go back to a place right at the beginning where I started, when I started learning with Photoshop, except now I, I have this knowledge and experience, but I can apply it to something else and see how that works. And that also gives me a chance to say, like, it's okay that if what I create turns out not great because I'm getting back into the swing of things. And it's more important for me to enjoy art and have it be something that adds to my life instead of something that's causing me frustration. And this might even be one of the reasons why you originally stopped doing art was because it was so frustrating for you. You want you had were trying to strive to create something or get to a certain level or learn a certain technique and it was just you could never quite get the results that you wanted and so you just gave up on it. Why Punish yourself. When you start to look around at, again, the children's book illustration example, you start to notice other examples of where creativity is used and where people have applied visual decoration or they've created something from scratch. It doesn't have to just be flat surfaces like digital paintings or uh, drawings or acrylic paintings or whatever. It can also be sculpture. It could be 3D. There's so many different avenues for you to be creative. And all you have to do is just start. Give yourself permission to take that first step. So just pause for a second to take a look and find the name of that book that I was talking about at the beginning of this podcast called You Can Draw in 30 Days by Mark Kistler. And I think it's a great shaken off the rust or beginner art book because it teaches you actually a lot of quite advanced techniques, but it does it in a very non-threatening, super fun easy to get into way that uh, the exercise they do take quite a bit of time though I will say that that when I was started to get into it and explore it uh, I did you know was put in a good amount of time and uh, but it was fun I got to use the digital tools and use them in a way that would recreate how traditional tools look which again for me was another really big aha moment because 
in Photoshop, when you start using it right out of the box, it's not, it's very, it feels very digital. And I think that a lot of tools feel very digital, but when you use a digital tool or a software or whatever, or an app, and it feels like, or at least it looks like pencil, all of a sudden there's this connection. And for me, it feels like my imagination sparks a little bit because you have all the advantages of digital, but you still have this very traditional look. And I'm not sure if people could look at some of the digital drawings that people do when they're they're actually mimicking traditional tools. And if someone said, this is a scan of a drawing that I did, I don't think anybody would be able to tell. So we are almost at the end of this podcast. I'm going to keep this one short again, and we will get back to guests. I need guests. It's just been so crazy busy with the community. So before I go, though, I do want to say with this whole idea of shaking off the rust. One of the big themes from uh, a lot of the podcasts that we did last year, talking with different artists, was this idea of community and working with other people and having other people help you and allowing other people to see your work so that they can push you ahead. All this is really important. And so if you are somebody who's looking to get back into art and you don't have a community of artists that you can join or you don't have a local art group or you don't have a study buddy that you can rope into going through some art tutorials with you, I would like to invite you into the Pencil Kings community and say that we've got an amazing community and it just continues to get better as we add more into it and we're starting to get people connected more. We have a really big announcement coming up right away where we're going to allow the users to connect in new, fun, cool, I don't know what other adjectives I can use, but we're creating a, uh, systems that allow different groups inside the community to create fun activities for different group members to participate in each and every month. And it's a little bit different than we've done in the past. This one is more based on what people are interested in. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see how everything plays out. So if you're the person that's listening there, sitting on the fence, thinking, oh, you know, I would like to draw or I would like to get back into art or you know somebody that would like to get back into art, I would love it if you could tell them about what we're doing here at Pencil Kings, or if it's you, I welcome you into Pencil Kings. You'll be getting, when you join, you'll be getting emails from me, and I like to welcome all the new members with a one-on-one Skype call so we can figure out what you want to actually achieve with your art. And yeah, I would love to see you inside. So thanks for listening. January is almost done. Big things coming in February. Uh, This has been the Pencil Kings Podcast, and if you're yet to start shaking off the rust, go ahead, grab that pencil, grab that pen, do it. See you soon. Bye.